I get asked a lot, what advice would I give people that are new to teaching biology or want to become biology teachers? So that's what I'm gonna go through with you today. Some of the advice I'd give and give you a bit of an insight of what my usual or typical day looks like as a teacher. So whether you're here for ideas as a biology teacher or you're a student and just want to know what I get up to, then keep watching. So I'm gonna start with an insight into a typical day because I know really that's what a lot of you want to know. What do I do in a typical day? Well, let's just start off by saying a typical day might be a bit misleading because every day is different, but there are some elements that are the same all the time. So here is my typical schedule. You can see that every day I'm waking up at the same time, leaving at the same time, but it's the chunk in the middle that varies. What I do each day in school is not gonna be identical, but I'll show you a couple of examples. And then what I do each evening is also not gonna be identical, but let's go through some of the things that commonly go on. So first of all, every single day, the latest I wake up is 6 a.m. I say the latest because I have two-year-old twins and it really depends on what time they decide they're gonna wake up. So 6 a.m. I get up straight into the kitchen sorting out the twins but also getting myself a much needed coffee. Then we are out the door by seven o'clock, drop the boys off at nursery, which opens at 7.30 and then I'm normally in school by about quarter to eight or eight o'clock. Once I get into school, I'm then gonna be setting up everything for the day. That's including checking the lessons, getting all the resources ready. Um, they're all ready from the previous week, but I mean like loading them up. Uh, it could be checking emails, it might be the odd bit of marking. And then I have tutorials, so I'm a sixth form tutor. So I do tutorials normally between about 8.20 and 8.40 every morning. I'll see one or two of the students in my tutor group one-on-one -on -one for a catch up and to see how they're doing. After that point, our lessons start at 8.50 and we finish at 3.30. And in that chunk of time, this is where it varies every day. I might have two lessons, three lessons, four lessons, five lessons, it varies. But I typically have um, three lessons per day. Now that isn't the standard for a teacher. The reason I only have three out of the five a day usually is because I'm the head of science, head of department. So that means that you have fewer teaching hours and you have more um, periods which are dedicated to doing other jobs linked to being head of science. So that's why I actually get more hours than someone that might just um, not have that extra responsibility and they are purely teaching, they'll have more teaching time. I will always have a nice coffee at some point throughout the day, meet the other teachers in science downstairs in the prep room, head to the staff room, and that is the time to have a bit of a debrief, relax before we go and start all over again. <laughs> Lunchtime, it really depends how much time I have, whether I'm going down to the staff room or just eating at my desk, which is something I really shouldn't do. But the reality is a lot of us teachers do that, particularly as I then do more tutorials at the start of lunch. Again, I see about two students for about 10 minutes each at the start of lunch for a one on one tutorial to catch up then it's lunchtime getting some work done. So our day ends at 3.30, but I tend to stay until 4.30. Then it's going to nursery, collect the boys, getting them all ready for bed. And then from six o'clock in the evening, I am by myself again. And that is when I'll get my dinner cooked. And if you know my Instagram well, you'll know there's different things I'll be doing each evening. So on Tuesdays at seven o'clock, I then go live on Instagram and TikTok. On Mondays, I do tutoring. On Thursdays, I do tutoring. Wednesday and Friday are my evenings off where I just relax. Or if I have a new product coming out, such as the flashcards I've done recently, and the big one that's coming up is my online course, which I'm so excited about, and you'll see more on that soon. Then on those free evenings, that is when I'm probably gonna get some of that work done as well. So that is my typical day. It is absolutely packed full, but I do love it. So I'm now gonna move into the bit which is advice for teachers. I'm gonna start with the big one. Number one is subject knowledge. You really, really need to secure your subject knowledge. And your subject knowledge might be amazing already, but I'm thinking about me when I started. My subject knowledge was very poor because what I did at university was not the same as A-level. So I essentially hadn't looked at A-level biology content 
in about three or four years and you could tell. So what I'd recommend is using the textbook and make sure you're reading ahead and you're always at least a week or two ahead. Um, or you could use my A-level notes for this. I know a lot of new teachers have been using my notes or my other YouTube videos to teach themselves the content to know exactly what the key marking points are and where the misconceptions are. Particularly if you've got a high achieving class, you need to make sure that you can think of the questions they might be asking and have those ready in advance. So you can feel more confident and they'll be more confident in you. So subject knowledge is the big thing to be working on. Number two is come up with any way possible to be efficient. The first few years of teaching are definitely the hardest because you're still learning the skills. You might be polishing up your subject knowledge but also you don't have all the resources made. So now that I've been teaching for over 10 years, every single possible lesson, I've already got a lesson plan, I've got the PowerPoints, I've got the resources ready, and because I've taught them so many times, I just need to see what's the next lesson, bang, I don't even have to plan, I know it off by heart already. But that was not the case for the first few years, and it used to take me a lot of time planning the lessons, creating the PowerPoints, um, so that does take a lot of time. Now the ways that you could be more efficient is perhaps with your marking. It does depend what your school's rules are on this, but at my school we really promote whole class feedback. So we use templates where you can then project it up on a PowerPoint and it might be, here are all the things that lots of you did well, here are the common misconceptions, and then we set targets using codes. So it might be T1 equals, and then you write the target, T2 equals. So then when you're marking their work, you just need to write the code and the first 10 minutes of the next lesson, project up the whole class feedback, talk them through it, and then they write down what the target was for that code. Now they are getting just as much value from that and you are gonna be marking so much quicker. And I find actually that talking through the marking in that way means they're engaging with your feedback more and they're more likely to understand it um, and acknowledge what you've said. Now, another set of recommendations are for certain books that I'd recommend that you might find helpful. So here is actually an old Instagram post of mine. These are some of the top books that I recommend linked to science, behavior, cognitive learning. So looking at how you could tweak your teaching to really improve. So if you do have any spare time, I mean, do we? Probably not. But if you do and you wanted to read a book, then these are the ones that I would recommend. And I'll link them all in the description below as well so you can get a copy of them. So my next recommendation is to make sure you are talking to the staff around you, talking to family, friends, for support. But in particular, I'm gonna go back to the idea of talking to the people that you work with. It is such a good way to be able to share ideas, but also it could be to share any worries you have. You will find that you're not the only one that finds a particular class hard or a particular activity, or there might be times of the year where you've got data to add into certain systems, reports to write, loads going on, and you're finding it hard, and you won't be the only one. So definitely talk to people to get support as a team. So that's it, that is a day in my life and some top recommendations for anyone that wants to become a biology teacher or maybe is just starting out. So going back to my number one recommendation which was secure your subject knowledge, I recommend that you watch this video now which is all about the topic overviews. So I hope you found it helpful, if you did please give this video a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell so you don't miss out on any of the latest videos.